Hi and welcome to another of the DTA screencasts and in this session we're looking at uh, respiration principally we're looking at disassociation and uh, association curves first and foremost though um, we just recall that the process of respiration occurs at the respiratory membrane and we have internal and external respiration this would be the site of the external respiration from the alveoli to the working uh, to the capillary sorry and then we also have the internal respiration which takes place at the working muscles and the capillaries so just a bit of recap from the previous screencast so uh, let's take a look at this what we're trying to do is work out how the oxygen actually gets from the alveoli and then down into the working muscles now we know that there's a, a diffusion across from the alveoli and it goes into the red blood cells but it's a little bit more complex than that and um, we're just going to look at that right now so principally what we actually have inside our red blood cells are hemoglobin some of you may have heard of those before but what that is is a binding site for the O2 where it's transported in the blood so inside our red blood cell we have these hemoglobin and the O2 is drawn towards these hemoglobin and then it binds to them and it's carried around by the red blood cells. So as you can see here in this diagram, you have your red blood cell within the capillary. The O2 diffuses across the uh, membranes, binds onto the hemoglobin. And this usually occurs when we have a high concentration of O2. So the perfect place for this to happen would be in the lungs. So high concentration as we breathe in, inhale all that um, oxygen rich air, high, high concentration of O2 and then therefore we have a high saturation of haemoglobin and this is then called oxyhemoglobin. Okay so we'll move on then. So what we're turning around and saying here is at the site of the alveoli there is a partial pressure of O2 of 100 within there. So the haemoglobin in the alveoli capillaries here are attracted to the O2 or is the O2 that are attracted to the haemoglobin. So let's take Harry here for example, he's our haemoglobin. What happens is because of this attraction each one of these O2 molecules here is incontrollably drawn towards Harry here. So this is exactly the same as what happens with the oxygen and it's drawn towards the haemoglobin and then therefore transported off into potentially the working muscles. So let's look at the internal respiration. The site of the muscle tissue, there is a low partial pressure of O2. So as the, uh, uh, the haemoglobin comes along through the capillaries here, it comes to a site where there is a low partial pressure of O2, as we've uh, looked at already here. Therefore, there is a disassociation of the O2 from the haemoglobin. In other words, the O2 releases the uh, sorry, the haemoglobin releases the O2 into the working muscles. So we have Harry here. He loses some of his O2 molecules, and they appear here in the working muscles. Now notice that he hasn't got rid of all of his O2 molecules. So we could presume that the muscles don't need lots of O2, and therefore you could argue that we're at rest or not working very hard. The haemoglobin molecules would then move on through the capillaries and the process starts again. So if we were doing exercise we could presume that more of these O2 molecules would be dropped off within the working muscles because it would need more. But we're going to investigate some other factors that will affect the disassociation in a minute. So at the lungs, while at rest, there is a high 2 of uh, concentration, which we've already looked at, and there's a, therefore we have a high saturation of haemoglobin in the alveoli capillaries. So we'll just have a look at that on this chart here. This is something that you'll probably get to see uh, within your textbooks, and it's known as the disassociation curve. So along here, we've got the values of the partial pressure of oxygen. So let's say 10 represents 100, 6 is 60, etc. So, if we have a high partial pressure of O2, let's say that this is the site of the lungs. If we, oh, we'll just change this to pen actually. There we go. So, if we go up 
here like so in line with the curve and then take it across here we can see that this is the saturation of haemoglobin so at this site here when we have a high partial pressure of oxygen there is almost a full saturation of each one of the haemoglobin molecules so if this was the lungs that's got a high saturation so let's go to let's say the working muscles now we know that the working muscles we said before had a, a partial pressure of about 40 so if we take this one up here like so and then take it across each one of the haemoglobin molecules at the site of the working muscles only has a saturation of about 60 so where do you think the other 40 percent would have gone okay now some of you might have suggested that it would have gone into the working muscles and that would be absolutely right so that diffusion across means that we have only 60 percent saturation now of the haemoglobin because the rest of it the 40 percent has been diffused into the working muscles okay so if this is the high saturation and we've got a low saturation there we've worked out those values that will give us an high association in other words this transfer of the O2 into the haemoglobin that's known as the association and if we have a low partial pressure of O2 then what we can consider is a disassociation in other words some of the O2 has been released from the haemoglobin so what we're actually wanting in an ideal situation is that we have an association at the alveoli capillaries because we want the O2 to go to the haemoglobin and we want a disassociation at the muscle tissue in other words the O2 breaking away from the haemoglobin and moving into the working muscles okay and the last little section here we're looking at the factors that affect that association or that disassociation in essence if there is an increase in the partial pressure of CO2 there will be an increase in the disassociation so if you think about it at the working muscles you're going to have a higher level of CO2 therefore there is a greater disassociation so if you have your haemoglobin there then each one of your O2 molecules comes along and because there is a greater amount of CO2 at this site it disassociates away from the haemoglobin which suits us really because we need that for the working muscles and if we have an increase in that CO2 level which is the byproduct of us working we're going to have more disassociation of the O2 away from the haemoglobin which is what we want other things that affect it are an increase in temperature increase in the pH or the acidity and also a decrease in the partial pressure of O2 so with all of these factors if you think about it when you exercise you have an increase in the amount of CO2 you have an increase in the temperature uh, and potentially increase in uh, the acidity which would be the lactic acid and a decrease in the partial pressure of O2 at the site of the working muscles so all of these factors encourage the disassociation now where they encourage it is at the working muscles because that's where all of those things will predominantly take place so let's just have a look at this on the chart here so if we let's take the uh, the black line which is the normal one to start with so if we have a, a partial pressure which is relatively low so we say this is at the working muscles yeah so we've got this 30 here so it's a low partial pressure of O2 so if we take that line up at that point there that's how much we would have saturated within the haemoglobin therefore all of that there would disassociate into the working muscles as we increase the amount of CO2 so let's say we start working hard and we start producing more CO2 the shift moves to the right so as we go up the line here you can now see that we're only saturated to what, 30, 38, 35 something like that therefore we are now disassociating even more that much more and as the CO2 levels decrease as let's say we slow down and then we stop working so there is a low level of CO2 within the uh, working muscles as we go up here 
there is a greater saturation and only that amount there is disassociated into the working muscles. So what we say is when there is a shift to the right of this association disassociation curve we usually call that the bore shift and anything that moves to the right is going to encourage the disassociation. Anything that moves to the left will encourage an association. Okay, so um, get, maybe go back over that, have a look, uh, make your notes, and then we'll work on it in the session. Question I would ask you though, just to think about is, if you were smoking, how do you think that would impact on the saturation of the haemoglobin? Just an interesting one to think over, and we'll look at that within our next session. Okay, thanks very much.